Hi there. I'm coming at you in this video with uh, a message about sacredness. The sacred symbolism of womanhood um, and asking the question, what do you hold sacred? What do you think is sacred in this world that has been let go of, that needs to be revived and brought back to life? How do you envision what's sacred? How do you experience it? How do you live it out? How do you feel what's sacred? Um, I think recently, I know all of my messages on this channel are about the beguines and the essence of an empowered woman, an independent woman, a strong woman. And this morning, I had the opportunity to talk to a church congregation and my messages are not religious. However, my faith comes from a Lutheran background. So some context on why I'm so fascinated by um, how religion influences life and not just Christian religion, but religions from around the world. So this morning I had the opportunity to talk to a church congregation and we we're talking about how is it that their church needs to change in order to be revitalized and grow in the future? And without that happening, what's going to happen to the church? And got to a point where I brought up this book called Figuring the Sacred by Paul Ricoeur. And really, really beautiful work talking about how in our modern day lifestyles, we have lost touch with the sacred. And Paul Ricoeur talks about it in a lot of different ways in his work, but I think in one of the most profound and most important ways, he offers a lens of imagination, conversation, and spirituality to refigure, literally, what you believe to be sacred in the world. Um, this approach usually is about God, but for the case of womanhood, what I'm going to propose to you today is a, a pondery and a quandary about how is it that you can refigure what it means to be woman in your own world. Um, and again, from other messages, getting away from politicized feminism and taking it back to archetypally architecturally, biologically, biocognitively, what does it mean to be a woman? And I think it's really, really important to remember that uh, the way that we perceive the world around us, the way that we think and feel, determines how our biology responds. Um, and it's more than mind over matter, it's more than just belief changes biology, because it's not one, th it's not cause and effect all the time in a system as complex as the human body and the soul and the mind, it's more about, um, in biocognition, what we call cultural co-emergence or contextual co-emergence, where things are happening in different places at the same time from the stimuli of a specific context, right? So it's not that one thing causes this thought, causes my body to do another, it's that all of these systems are working together and there's a response that co-emerges based on the context and the culture around us. And this is important because without that kind of an understanding, we look at everything very reductionistically and think that we can just track backwards in time or track backwards in a system like the human system, assuming that we can go fix it, go change it, go... Uh, reset the button and, and turn it back on to what it should be or what it could be or give it a system update and it's all going to be good but it's not how we work. We aren't computers. We are a whole different kind of technology in and of ourselves and understanding that by losing what it means to be a sacred woman, what it means to let go of womanhood in its essence changes the immunity, changes the endocrinology, changes the neurology of us 
um, in an adverse way because we're losing a part of who we are structurally and who we were meant to be. So I've had a lot of questions in the last few years about how is feminism different than womanhood and what is empowerment really and in understanding archetypes and understanding the essence of something sacred and ancient I think that's where I've started to to find clarity in feminism as a political movement and not that feminism is bad unless it's taken on with anger and control over assertion over exertion um, feminism's fine men and women both support feminism but it doesn't have to be a politicalized uh, push for ultimate control and victimhood at the end of the day which is never ever 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 good for our health and longevity so again back to the original question for today if you're refiguring the sacred woman that you are what does that mean for you in mind body spirit what needs to be refigured how do you go about doing that and i found something so powerful in the biocognitive yoga courses that i teach right now where this group of women comes together every saturday morning and we're getting at the essence of union right yoga as union not as pretzel so it's focused on the symbols and emotions that surface during movement and the metaphors and um, the symbols of the insights but also the symbols of what a movement actually means and looking at discomfort tension and blocks or stickiness in our movements as an opportunity to disembody trauma or stress that we're holding on to um, but I'm finding with these women that what they're doing is reshaping their hologram, their holographic essence. They are literally refiguring their sacred womanhood as we go through course. So I just am amazed at, in just a few short weeks, how they've been able to do this with very specific practices, very specific techniques. They're beginning to surface these insights naturally instead of having to do it mechanically and um, like step by step. It's just kind of naturally starting to come about for them. But we've got women saying, what if I could go to work and stand up to my supervisor who micromanages me? What if I could enter the boardroom and not feel like I'm being judged and shamed with the weight of the world on my shoulders? What if I could have a conversation with my family members and stand up for myself and assert myself with compassion instead of just letting them take advantage of me? What if I could express myself in a way that was open, transparent, but it didn't mean spilling my guts to people who don't need to know about my private life? Uh, what if um, what if I didn't have to compromise my identity in order to get ahead in life? What if <laughs> I could live life full of joy, in my excellence, and with gratitude all day every day? What if fear didn't overcome me? What if frustration didn't overcome me in moments of stress or confrontation? So all of these what-if questions that, that have been posed that they thought were impossible or they have found solutions to before that weren't sustainable suddenly are becoming sustained for them based on this deep inner work that they're doing to reimagine, reinvigorate, and revitalize what womanhood is for them. And like I've said before, it's different for each of us. We, we have consensus around what womanhood is but there are very unique, um, intricate differences between each of us and how we experience womanhood, even though the essence or the archetype of woman is the same for all of us. So I just had to share with you this morning, figuring the sacred. I thought it was very timely. Um, it's what I need right now. And I'm finding that when I share what excites me, 
a lot of other people come out and say the same thing's going on in my world. I think there's that collective consciousness that we're going through similar things at, at the same time is true. <laughs> However you explain it, I know we all have a different way to do that too, but I wanted to share this book with you this morning. I wanted to pose the question, how are you figuring or refiguring based on your spirituality, based on your conversations and the narrative in your head, and based on imagination. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and keep on being curious.